Good evening uh, to all of you. Uh, I have not been connected for the past two weeks because I was visiting Italy on a long journey, visiting uh, relatives and some friends. My trip goes all over and tonight's video is a compilation of places I visited. It starts in uh, Tuscany where I visited uh, because I was invited to a reception of, for the wedding of uh, Alessandro Gallo, the winemaker of Castello di Alba and Rocca di Montemassi, and his wife Monica. It was an amazing evening, we had a lot of fun, a lot of great food, great music, and then uh, from that point on I am traveling north and you will learn more about my whereabouts. Also it was very nice to see uh, our president our, and friend Francesco Zanin in Tuscany uh, during the wedding. So, I'll see you later. I left uh, Toscany, I went north and uh, on the way on the coast, I went to the coast of uh, Toscany. I went through the beautiful mountains of uh, Massa Carrara where you can see in the Appennini uh, where they uh, have um, um, basically they're carving big blocks of uh, marmo, uh, Bianco Botticino, which is this beautiful white marble. And then we start entering Liguria. In Liguria, I spent a few days with my brother and uh, his wife uh, and uh, their little uh, girl, Ludovica, three-year-old. We spent three days at the beach, uh, truly simply enjoying the, the beautiful crystalline waters and enjoying amazing seafood and of course, great, great, great Vermentino. And you'll learn more right now. And this is a view of the village where we're staying, Varigotti. It's a beautiful little town, not far from Savona. It's quite an old village. It has very little access of parking. So not many people are using this beach. It's very, very private, really gorgeous. I'm looking west toward France and I'm here with uh, Paolo went down in the garden looking for some basil oh look at this look at this this little peach is really unique hai trovato il basilico trovato era sotto le zucche oh my gosh so beautiful <laughs> He was looking for basil, couldn't find it, but there was a growing under the, the squash. <laughs> More peaches here. It's like the Garden of Eden. Peaches, olive trees, grapes. These are table grapes. Not ready yet, but getting there. And this is the garden. They have some netting here, some wire net because they have some uh, wild boar coming to eat everything. And he found the basil somewhere in there. I don't know where. There are tomatoes growing everywhere. It looks very confusing this garden, but trust me, there's so much bounty in between, all growing together. And I don't know what this is. I will ask him what this plant is. It's about 
nine o'clock. We're gonna start dinner around 10 here on the terrace and just have fun. I brought actually Vermentino, like, um, I brought some 2017 Vermentino we macerated and ferment on the skin. And I wanna see what, uh, what my friend Paolo thinks of it. And one more view of this gorgeous landscape. find out that the grapes that grow up here are uva sultanina. Uva cluster is a grape that is, uh, doesn't have seeds, that is used in Sicily to make raisins, and Paolo is using it to put in uh, fruit salads. Really cool. In Italiano, cosa sono allora? Questo? Vermentino, pigato e matagosso. Vermentino Pigato Mata Ossu, che è un, un parente della Lumassina, che era lo spumante che abbiamo assaggiato. Abbiamo assaggiato Lumassina spumante e il Mata Ossu spumante, entrambi. Ah, ok. Lumassina è frizzante, ha meno, meno pressione. Ho capito. Il Mata Ossu è diciamo, il più antico. Poi hanno selezionato un clone più produttivo che non fa più questa struttura così grande. So, the Mata Ossu is an ancient variety and it is related to Lumassina, but here they develop some for sparkling wine and for still wine. Grazie. Ho imparato un'altra cosa, I learned something. So I am, I am tasting for the first time in my life a variety, the Mata Ossu, which I never had before. Really cool. Well, we just arrived from Liguria and we are here at my brother's trattoria. Osteria Sognatori, which is uh, Osteria of the Dreamers. We opened it uh, 20 some years ago with his friend from winemaking school. And after working for a few years for a couple of very famous producers here in the Lange, he decided to switch gear and uh, open a, a great little restaurant with very classic uh, traditional dishes from the Lange. I'm here with my brother in the trattoria and some friends and we're having a, a rosé made, made with Nebbiolo and Fraser, another variety from here from Piemonte. And the food is uh, as always fantastic, giardiniera, uh, vitello tonnato, right here, tagliatelle. There are some truffles on the way. And just in case, we brought some vermentino with us, so why not? And now I am in La Morra, in the heart of the Barolo district, surrounded by hills and hills of vineyards. Down in the distance is uh, Alba. This is a magic, really magic viewpoint of uh, one of the most famous wines in the world. That's where I grew up, and that's where I went to school. Very, very, very special. And uh, ciao. I'll see you soon. Well, I am uh, today up on the Alps with my brother at about uh, 8,000 feet and uh, we went up for a, for a hike. You can see how many beautiful flowers are all over and uh, we're also picking some Arnica which we will uh, infuse into some uh, alcohol. And then next time I come visit, I will bring back some uh, very highly concentrated Arnica for any, you know, muscle pains or, or what have you. 
And also for the first time, I am picking a little purple flower that the local people, they call uh, mountain tea. Uh, I have not yet uh, discovered what, um, what's the real name, perhaps the scientific name. And here it is, you can see it. It's this little purple pod, really, really pretty, which uh, when you seep in hot water, I've been told uh, it turned like a brownish color. And as you add a little bit of lemon juice, it turned really bright and purple. And that's just because uh, the acidity of the lemon changes the pH and makes the liquid very bright, the color that is into the flower. So I'm looking forward to go back to Alba and uh, and have a nice tea this evening and a new flavor for me uh, it's always very fascinating and very very much interesting here is another herb it is uh, artemisia also called wormwood that uh, people make liqueurs which is very good if you have an upset stomach you just make a tea in very small amounts is extremely bitter but a very strong medication and among the other beautiful things here is cheese the cheese here it's incredible with its flavors that come from the diet of the cows that eat a lot of herbs grasses and the milk is so intense and everything will transform into the amazing, rich, creamy, flavorful cheeses of the Alps. With Nebbiolo would be perfect actually. That's what I'm gonna have tonight. Here in the Casificio, buying some cheese made uh, by the milk that comes from the cows, it is beautiful herbs and flowers. Grazie, tu come ti chiami? Alessandro. Alessandro, Perché grazie. Si chiama Totò. <ride> e Totò. Vuoi anche un panetto di burro, Magnetta? Sì, anche del burro, grazie. Quanto ne vuoi un panetto? Un panetto. Due ti e mezzo. Va bene. E he's getting some butter also. This is a fresh more. Quanti mesi questo? Questo qui ha 15 20 giorni, questo qui è due mesi. This is only 20 days old. This is about 45 same cheese i just tasted them when it's sweeter when it's more a bit more sharp and just fantastic what a treat grazie and now we stop uh, where my brother knows a very special place and look at what we found poletus edulis toc 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 sopra nice and firm we're gonna clean it up a little bit. Poletus estivalis. This. Yeah, maybe it's estivalis. Beautiful. Più profumato. Estivalis. Ah, I'm happy. I want to show you another really cool thing. As you see right behind me, it is a cultivation of an herb that is a perennial it's called genepi which is illegal to harvest because it's very rare. Although there has been, uh, there have been successful uh, propagation of the GNP, which can only grow and produce uh, great aromatics at very high altitude. And so they created these fields, which are highly protected fr by, from um, wild boar and uh, here is a whole cultivation of genepi and this is uh, the producer i also learned from my brother that the the um, the eu has allotted several million dollars to create a, a center 
a university center to study the all the herbs that are here on this mountain and all of their um, positive uh, impact they can have as a medicinal so this is an amazing uh, microclimate on this on these hills and has so many herbs and i also learned of that there was a man quite a few years way way back in the early 1900s that as uh, his uh, income was to collect all these herbs medicinal herb and herbs and bring them down to the city and they were then prepared and sold in pharmacies unfortunately most of the this type of herbs have been uh, uh, pretty much suppressed by the in, by the um, by the modern medicine all the synthetic medicine i'm not saying they don't work i'm not saying they're bad but what i'm saying they really uh, made almost disappear the great tradition of herbs herbs can be very potent they can kill you and they can heal you so another really interesting thing well as you can see i was a bit all over and at one point i was within uh, 24 hours from 10 feet below sea level snorkeling to up to over 8,000 feet on top of a uh, range and uh, of the Alps. Uh, and uh, I came back uh, truly, truly very tired, drove a thousand miles in 10 days. And uh, yet um, I came back fully charged and inspired about the beautiful thing I saw, the beautiful time I had with family. Also tasting new things, having new ideas, and uh, so uh, I am uh, ready now for harvest and I'm excited and, uh, and very thankful that I was able overall to visit my family, my brothers, and uh, being joined by uh, my wife, Patricia, Maria, and his uh, friend, uh, Cameron. I'll see you next week with something else. I don't know what it is, but likely we're gonna be in the vineyard. Ciao, and I hope you enjoy my travels.